paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Ever wonder how to make two side-by-side -side girls' bedrooms both unique and distinctive, yet complementary to one another? We'll show you how, right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. In today's case study, we've got three little girls with big personalities and two little rooms in need of some excitement. We're showing you how to pack each one of them with distinctive punch and still have them coexist and complement each other and the rest of the house. First up is the big girls' room. We're going to dress the plain windows, jazz up the bland carpet, and replace the bunk beds with something that has style and storage. What gets me stumped is I don't know what to do other than beds and a dresser and some pictures. I'm not seeing classic girl palette. Okay. How about if there was a room that was more like that kind of fun vibe from the wardrobe that I'm seeing? They're cool. It just has to be fun and pretty and somewhere they enjoy. This is a box. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to decorate the heck out of this box. <laughs> ah, but that's not all. There's also a nursery in need of some excitement. And now, we get to do it all over again in here. Repeat. Lola and Luca's little sister Coco can't go without. This room is dull and rickety. It needs to be fun too. For these two rooms, that means fabric, flooring, and paint. Some fun furniture and artwork, lighting, window coverings, major storage, and, you guessed it, little girl bling. I want to create two distinct rooms that have their own character and personality, yet I want to create a linking element that connects the two rooms together. It's not such a tall order if you keep your mind open. Inspiration can strike anywhere. How cute is this? It is cute. What for? It's a tea towel, but how much is it? $28. Okay, so expensive for a tea towel. However, what if you turn this into a pillowcase? It's not about the object that it is now. It's about what you can turn it into. Since so many of my schemes and inspirations come from fabric, this is the ideal jumping off point. This kind of acid green mixed with the jade green is not the girl's go-to palette of pink and yellow and purple. And what do you know? We found another tea towel for the nursery. How about coral and mustard? I love that color combo, and each of these options has a link to the other. A lot of yellow in here, a little bit of yellow in there. We have the same mood, the same feeling in both. So we found tea towels in a women's clothing store for a kid's bedroom. Exactly. Once you've got your jumping off point, you're on your way. The next stop is flooring that links the rooms to each other and to the rest of the home. We're picking Broadloom. Good options. The solids seem like a missed opportunity to me. I also think that they look like a stain attractor. These are kids' rooms, right? This one? I really like that carpet, but it's a little bit loose, a loop, and there's a lot of jute in there. I don't know if it's kid-friendly. It's hard. There's nothing plush, plus it's gonna tie you to green. Mm -hmm. Or else, what if you went with the rainbow shades? Which are all a lot of fun. I'm favoring this one. Okay. Oh, and it's called Candy Star. When it comes to choosing Broadloom, beige isn't the only choice. Why not go for a stripe, something playful, something that actually adds a design element onto the floor? Here's what's so incredible about this stripe. It actually has the green and the blue from the first towel I chose, then it has the coral and the mustard from the second towel. Top it off with the fact that it has a good neutral grounding. This allows it to tie back to the rest of the house. So if these kids want to redecorate in the future, there's a rainbow of colors to choose from. With the floor covering taken care of and the jumping off palette in hand, it's time to fill in the rest of the scheme with fabrics for the furniture, cushions, and accents. These are kids' rooms, so we're keeping it playful and easy care. Now this fabric 
is exactly the kind of thing we are looking for. It's 100% cotton with a perfect color scheme to tie both of our rooms together. You could actually use this fabric in either of the two bedrooms for these kids. Samples chosen. Now, what to keep and what to lose. We have a veritable smorgasbord of fabric here. They're kids' bedrooms. Why shouldn't they be fun and filled with pattern? It's time to edit. I think we could do these two together and not this one. OK, fine. Take that out. How about this one? This is that big flower. Love that. Yay, batting a thousand. This fun polka dot will be used on the bed skirt. Some fabrics will be used as color hits on the pillows. And we've chosen a couple of fabrics for new blinds for the girls' room. And in the nursery, we're replacing some of the rickety furniture. Is this the chair? This could be the chair. I love this one. This yes. is our drapes. And it's a great color. I think the polka dot is really good. We'll use this juicy orange for the duvet. This truly is Scheme Development 101. Tommy's so right. It's all about color and interest. Florals, geometric, big and small prints give a kid's room interest and curiosity. When you can find a fabric that's really inspiring and start there, the rest comes really, really easily. These two girls' rooms are getting big personality at low cost, and that has these girls pretty happy. The jumping off point helps steer us to carpet that links the rooms and a ton of fun fabrics. Next up, picking the right paint and inexpensive, durable furniture gets a facelift. There's two of them. And they're $65 the, the pair. pair. Three sisters, two bedrooms. Each room is getting a personality tune-up while coexisting with the other. What if you turn this into a pillowcase? It helps to be open to inspiration from anywhere. A playful scheme leads to colorful, fun fabrics. Even the carpet has come out to play. All a lot of fun. In the same way that the fabrics you choose don't have to match exactly, same holds true for your paint colors. You want to look at your inspiration fabrics for a jumping off point, but then you may need to temper those colors slightly so they don't look too intense on the wall. Our main wall color, Growing Pains, is just a few shades lighter than the blue in the tea towel. OK, so I think our wall colors are awesome. They look fantastic. And then I always think about the ceiling. After all, it's kind of like the fifth wall. I've chosen to go with a pale yellow, which also happens to be the exact shade of the branch in my tea towel. And how's this for another awesome idea? I love this color, cucumber sandwiches, because it goes perfectly with the tea towel. It does. What if we take a freehand line and make it almost like a wave, and then they'll bring the overlay color up to cover the line. Oh, OK. And always a pencil. Never a pen on walls. Pen ink will bleed through the paint. Looks good. For the nursery, I need to somehow balance the intensity of the drapes. So I've chosen to go with a coral that is found both in the drapery fabric and in the tea towel. Then, to cool off the ceiling, an extremely pale blue. It'll be a nice contrast to the coral. I've always been a firm believer in vintage furniture, especially for kids' rooms. It's cheap, durable, and just waiting for your own custom touch. Those are cute. So because the finish is in perfect shape on the top, yep. we don't have to spend a lot of time stripping them down before we paint them a different color. Light sanding and you're good to go. Pre-loved for your loved ones. Makes so much sense. So we can get some decent storage. And there's two of them. And they're $65 the, the pair. pair. Two side tables for two little girls. Perfect. OK, I'll take one. You take one. OK. These are coming with us. I get that bunk beds are an easy solution to the challenge of how to put two kids in a bedroom together. If you're sharing room with your sibling, you must feel like you're living on top of each other a lot of the time. I've got enough length in the room just to put two mattresses end to end. This way, I can divide the room in half and the kids get to celebrate sharing while still having their own space in the world. And to save some cash, you can design and build your own toe-to-toe -to -toe platform beds. They're easy to build or have built. I attach two by threes on three walls to support the bed overall and to act as a bit of a frame. Next, I got some melamine shelves ready-made so I don't have to worry about painting them and they happen to be the perfect size. I use them on their side to support 
a slab of three quarter inch thick plywood which goes over top and this is what the mattress will sit on. Here's a tip, get it cut at the store first and then you don't need a table saw. As long as you know your measurements, you're golden. Last, you need a couple of trim pieces. A one by four across the face, one by threes running vertically and the finishing touch, a little piece of decorative chair rail to tie into the profile of the baseboards. All it needs now is a coat of paint and we will be all in, all done for under $200. How good is that? As for the vintage side tables, they're being sprayed robin's egg blue, which gives them a totally different personality. You can actually see their curvy, feminine details. And we came across headboards, which are getting a shock of leafy green. The crib? It's going red, in tune with the other vibrant nursery colors. For maximum fun, we're even calling in the circus. Mail has arrived for you. Mail order animals. It's wallpaper. No. These are a giraffe and an alligator made from vintage wallpaper that I ordered online. The internet can be your best design friend. Which animal do we want? I think this giraffe with a flower pattern. Hit send and wait for the results. Forget about expensive artwork. How about having wall art? That is cool. Less than $100, shipped to you direct. You too can have an alligator and a giraffe. And giraffes need a place to sit. Where it is, they like stripes. Here's the ugly duckling that became a swan. The standard way to install a stripe is always to run it vertically. So if you're buying a fabric and you want to reinterpret it in a different way, just make sure you call the upholster and tell them exactly what you want and how you envision it. What I love is seeing them go across all the humps in the chair and the side-to-side -side stripe on the seat. That's what makes it awesome. These once boring girls' rooms have been inspired by fabric, lively paint, funky neutral carpet, and a visit from the jungle. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It's a kid's room. You can't really go wrong. Next on the list are lighting, storage, and girly accessories for our bohemian bedrooms. How do you add pizzazz to two girls' bedrooms for three sisters and still have them play nice with each other? This is a box. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to decorate the heck out of this box. The recipe, fabrics, furniture, floors, and fun. Now, it helps if you can see everything. When I went shopping for lighting, we were super restricted because it's a very low ceiling in both rooms. This is seven and a half feet, if that. So I tried to find something that would sit close to the ceiling, but wouldn't hug the ceiling completely. This is like a lighting bonanza. I love you brought the showroom here. Yeah, some are vintage and some are newish, but they all have a bit of an interesting sort of fun vibe to them. What I love about the cutout sort of squirrely silver fixture here is that it gives you the ceiling hugger effect of a flush mount. Mm -hmm. Then I'm drawn to this larger one with the daisies around it. This one's pushing it. This one is about 14 inches, including the canopy and one link of chain. That one only gives us six feet, four inches of clearance. Fine for kids, but not parents. I think we could convert this into a ceiling hugger if we take off the loop, take off all the chain, and we could actually connect the canopy directly to the fixture. You've saved yourself at least an inch and a half to two inches doing that. These kids are tiny, and as long as their parents aren't gonna hit their heads on it, we're good to go. Let's just hope the Jolly Green Giant doesn't come for a visit. You know, the Jolly Green Giant's not real, darling. Oh, crushed. At least the window coverings are coming around. You don't need to limit yourself to a single fabric when making drapes. Adding a simple band detail to the side of a Roman blind or a pair of drapes adds an extra bit of wow factor and impact, and frankly, a touch of fun. Windows? Check. Now, what about storage? This is a perfect indication of how storage is not being maximized. So we need to fix that. I know you didn't want to keep those bunk beds, so I got us $200 for them. We've upped our budget. How about we take that $200 as an investment towards, kind of like a down payment? That's nice. Solid pine, unfinished, unpainted. We can finish it however we want. Okay. And it has 12 drawers, so each girl gets six drawers. So every time I see a piece of furniture that's essentially nude, I know you're gonna do something to it. What are you gonna do? How about paint the frame one color, the drawers another color, and get rid of those really lame knobs? Well, we could definitely do something with really cool knobs. Don't underestimate the power of accessories. They can create interest in the most unlikely places. For $8 each, we bring some real sparkle to this practical 12-drawer dresser we had painted robin's egg blue and white. This one, on the other hand, 
is $22. Yeah. But how much were the side tables? They're $65 the, the pair. pair. So couldn't we afford to invest a whopping $22 in a new handle that would really dress it up? It would have a ton of impact. Speaking of impact, look at the storage under the bed in the big girl's room. We finished the bed off with a fresh coat of paint, added baskets underneath from storage. I've stapled a piece of Velcro right to the underside of the chair rail, put the opposite side of the Velcro on this adorable little polka dot skirt with an accent band and a box pleat detail. I simply set the Velcro in place and presto, looks incredible. For kids sharing a room, monogrammed linens help keep everything organized and sane. On average, there's a $20 setup charge, and then it's $5 for each item. What princess wouldn't love something like this? All this sewing has got my creative juices flowing for the nursery. That is adorable. Well, we had a few scraps of fabric left over, and I just thought, instead of artwork, why not make this thing of pennants? It's really cute. And I just took uh, some iron-on interfacing, which I stiffened up the fabric with, cut them out with my pinking shears, and then just zigzag them onto some cotton tape. And I figured we'd go like this and hang them up across the wall. You are a crafty woman. Well, that ain't the half of it. Loved those tea towels so much that I had to find as many possible uses for them as I could. So this is a simple laundry bag. So two pieces of fabric together, add a little ribbon tab at the top, a couple of brass hooks on the wall, and presto, you have a simple wall-hung laundry bag, because if there's one thing I know, every nursery has a lot of laundry. But the do-it-yourself doesn't stop there. We've got three shelves, one for each of the girls. Simple, they're made out of pine, and all we've done is prime them so far. So I'm going to do the one for the nursery, and I say we just kind of do a little fun, freehand painted detail. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It's a kid's room. You can't really go wrong. You right. do whatever you want. Not like that! Don't even start with me, woman. <laughs> Sorry. Add some acrylic paint to plain old white latex and you can create custom colors inexpensively. You need to also paint the underside because these kids will all see them when they're lying in bed. Okay, well then, can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd best be ordering a pizza because we're going to be here all night. We're almost done bringing style to a room for two fun girls and their sister's nursery. Next up, well, you get the picture. Transforming two girls' rooms into distinctive yet complimentary spaces is more fun than you'd think. How cute is this? Follow our step-by-step -step guide. Good options. Then you'll have vibrant rooms that max out every inch of space and reflect your kids' lively personalities. That is adorable. Are you ready to see them? Let's go. These rooms show what you can do with paint and decoration. I didn't change any major elements, but I completely changed the way that both rooms feel. The girls' initial reactions were crazy. <laughs> they were screaming, jumping. Hi, Luca! It's just fantastic. When dealing with a small room, you need to use furniture to your advantage. By putting the two beds end to end, it creates a feeling of more space overall in the room, and I'm sure the kids are gonna love hanging out in there. Kids have a lot of stuff. It's all about storage in kids' bedrooms. We totally redesigned the closet so that they could accommodate short hanging and then shelves down below. There were lots of good furniture finds, but I have to say that the fabric is where it all comes together and the fabric and the patterns and the texture are what brings it to life. I think this scheme truly captures the essence and the energy of what it means to be a kid. I loved the animals, the paint. I ordered the artwork animals online, but you could do this at home. If you've got some extra wallpaper lying around, simply cut it out in any pattern you like, any design, apply it with some wallpaper paste to the wall, and voila, instant artwork. Couldn't be easier. So much of the furniture available today is dark, boxy, and masculine. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a curvaceous, more feminine feel. I happened to find a couple of side tables and a dresser that hit just the right note for a girly vibe. That's the big sister's room. Now let's look at the nursery. It's important to save money wherever you can. 
There was nothing wrong with the crib, nothing too fantastic about it either, but by spraying it a new color, it gives it new life and it's super friendly on the budget. It's just so perfect because all three girls have had the same crib. I couldn't have been happier. I love that they used the crib again. This dresser would never be considered typical nursery furniture. Originally, I'm sure it was meant for a master bedroom, but hey, it cost $400, it was in perfect condition, and needed absolutely nothing done to it. There's enough room to put the change pad, accessories that you need, and a lamp. There's room for everything. I chose this broad loom because the color and the pattern were perfect for the schemes. They linked the two rooms together, but it has an added benefit. Since it's made of 100% pure wool, there's no off-gassing, and that's an important consideration to me in a room where kids are definitely going to be playing on the floor. Let's be perfectly honest, the windows in this house are not the most beautiful windows on their own. The best answer in a kid's bedroom is to go with something soft. So one room got Roman, one room got drapes. But both rooms had beautiful patterned fabric that was soft and added a really nice textural element. I'm always drawn to light fixtures that can cast a pattern of light on the ceiling. In order to get the best effect, make sure you use a clear light bulb. The whole bohemian aesthetic incorporates frilly and feminine details. I couldn't help but be drawn to the mirror because it has a sort of frilly, lacy, fretwork pattern all the way around it. It's just the perfect tie-in. Try and make sure that every trinket you buy for a kid's room is also functional. For example, little bowls and trays can be used to keep all their bits and pieces organized. Little statues can be turned into bookends. All of these are just tricks to help keep all of that clutter under control. These three little spitfires are fun and funky. We've created two distinct rooms to go with their big personalities. I had the best bedroom when I was a kid. It wasn't normal. I had an antler chandelier. I had a flocati carpet. Herringbone wallpaper. My duvet cover handmade by my mother. If you look at my work, you know, a lot of it's pretty much based on <laughs> that first bedroom. I had a bunk bed that had a crocheted 